Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch over Analyzed Adventures. And what I have for you today is the grand finale, the last episode, the final part of the over-analysis of Black Sail's ghost ship. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off with a white screen. Totally wrong here. Now, who would have thought that a ship that gives off strange whale sounds and was once used for kidnapping children would have some freaky stuff going on in it? But at any rate, after the whale song is done, our heroine goes into the boiler room and we get this kind of first person perspective that shows off the game engine. In fact, I do wonder what game engine did they use to make this game? But nevertheless, I do have to tip my hat to Deck 13. I do like how they use interesting camera angles in their game to make the areas seem bigger than they really are and also to make them visually interesting. After all, someone probably spent a lot of time building these rooms, so they should feel proud and show off their work a little bit. Okay, I just complimented them, but at the same time, this scene is going on for a while. Maybe they're just trying to mask a loading screen or just pad out the runtime. But eventually, we do get control over our heroine again, and she makes a rather disturbing find. Oh my god. No. No, that can't be true. Ash is everywhere, and this... This is Fiona's handkerchief. No, this can't be true. Alright, now I get the game's trying to establish that Fiona is dead. But I do not understand why our heroine's having such an emotional reaction to this fact. I mean, she just had a trip of vision involving the little girl. It's not like she knew her or anything. And also, we on a kidnapping, murdering ghost ship. Are you not surprised something bad happened to her when the game was firmly establishing that something bad was going to happen to her? Who would do such an awful thing to a little girl? Well, clearly that evil doctor... I mean, we just had a vision about it. So we run around and loot and take everything that isn't nailed down in a bunch of different rooms and solve some puzzles. But basically, our goal is to get into a new room. The room who we were trying to get into earlier, but the stairs collapsed under us. Yeah, we repair the stairs and go inside of it. And oh, look who's there. Yeah, Lex has gone all crazy now, and apparently he's been roaming the ship, and he's threatening us with a gun. Again, what a delightful co-star we have. Hey, Lex, it's me! <laughs> ah! Have you gone insane? Yeah, because up till now, he's been such a delight and a cornerstone of this plot. Man, she is really just brushing aside. Oh, you try to shoot me in the head. No big deal. You're just crazy now. Anna, is that you? What have I done? You're out of your mind. Everything is blurry. I can hardly see anything. I feel weak. In pain. I could really do with some medicine right now. Well, good thing while we were randomly going about the ship, we found a needle with some morphine in it. Yeah, we're going to shoot him up right now with a dirty needle. How fun. Ugh, that stuff really helps. Do you understand me again? I'm better now. Thank you. You did good. Yeah, she doesn't move. She's halfway across the room, and I guess she, like, throws the needle at him. Which, well, makes sense. He did shoot at us, so we should probably keep our distance. So now that Lex is all high on morphine, we chat a bit about the ship and how spooky it is and how we saw a little girl. And Lex comes to the startling realization that we already knew. We're on board a smuggler ship. Yes. My vision was about smugglers, too. Anna. What I mean by this is that there are probably lots of barrels down there that are filled to the brim with volatile liquid, and they are responsible for completely clouding your senses. No, no. This vision felt completely real. It... I can hardly describe it. I've never experienced something like that. I can't deny that this ship is creepy, but ghosts? I don't know. Yes, it's a well-known fact that all smuggler ships are loaded down with psychedelic liquids that are leaking throughout the ship that cause you to see visions. It's a strange rationalization, but we're rolling with it. And speaking of rolling with it, Lex has a quest for us because, well, that's how we've played this game up till now. Basically, all we've ever done in Black Sails, other than play as a little girl, is run errands and do things for Lex. You need to become my eyes, ears, and hands. See if you can fix the position and get us back on course. Before we leave the ship, it's essential that we know which direction to take. Otherwise, we'll be lost in open sea. 
But I'm a reporter, not a sailor. There's no better time to become one. In case you couldn't make sense of that, Lex wants us to find where we are in the middle of the ocean because we're going to escape this ship. It's all spooky and filled with psychedelic gas, so it's a good idea to get off of it. So how the hell are we going to go about doing that? How are we going to find out where we are with zero navigational skills? Well, there's a book we can take a look at that explains everything. Take it away, Anna. To identify a shipping route in this book, I first need to find five places that have been visited. If only I had clues about where this ship has been to, then I could use this sea chart to identify the five places. Which basically means run around, click on a bunch of strange looking objects, and there'll be some latitude and longitude notes written on it because, well, they're like curators or something. But after finding the five objects we need to find, we can play a little mini game where we plot out the little plots on the map, and somehow that leads us to discovering where we are because, well, just roll with it. There actually is a shipping route that links all five of these locations. That's the route! Yeah, I don't quite understand how all this works. We found five objects, and they wrote down where they found them at, and somehow because all these five objects are in a general area, that means we're still in that general area. I mean, we're on a ship. We could be halfway around the world. It's not like we're stuck to this fixed location because we picked up five things. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think I'm on the right track. Next, I should... There is no more right track. What was that? Lex? Ooh, so spooky. I mean, Lex could be a ghost. Ooh, that would be interesting. No, he's not a ghost. So now that we have a map that tells us where we're at through ways I'm not entirely sure, we still have a couple of other things to do for Lex. And that's find out if we're near land, and lo and behold we are because we see a seagull out through the window. And also we need to find out how fast a ship is going. And again, it's not particularly difficult. We just drop a piece of wood tied to a rope and time it. Easy peasy. And that's no lie, it is pretty easy. Take this for an example. We need to find a watch so we can time the knots and figure out the speed of the ship. Well, there's a big old clock right here. We fix it, and then what? Well, we just keep clicking on it, and eventually it just gives us a pocket watch. Well, that was easy. But nevertheless, after we're done with all these errands, we can finally talk to Lex again. If it's true what you say, then we're following a sea current. And if there's really land nearby, then we're currently sailing past a very small island. And because the rudder is stuck, we'll be sailing on, out into the open sea for days, maybe weeks. We can only survive if we get off the ship immediately and head for that island. Of all things, it's the lifeboat blocking the way out. We're trapped in here. We need to get out somehow, and fast. We need to set that lifeboat afloat. I saw a crane. If you can operate it, you can use it to lift away the lifeboat and solve two problems at the same time. I'll try. And watch yourself. Here, take this. The revolver. What am I supposed to do with it? There's no one here apart from the two of us. I'm not so sure about that anymore. What do you mean? Take it. Just in case. You'll need it more than I will. Do you know how to use it? I think sometimes it's more important to know when not to use it. You've got a point there. Well, you heard the man. We gotta move a lifeboat because apparently it's blocking our way out of here. And also, we are now packing heat to shoot at the ghosts or the whale songs, or maybe we can just shoot Lex if he tries to get fresh with us again. But once again, we are faced with another repeat of a puzzle. And that's mess around with the crane, repair it, so we can move a lifeboat and escape. But while looking for items to fix the crane with, we get a nice little psychedelic experience. Good, the crane's hook. We could lower the lifeboat into the water with it. Wait... What's that? That... That's the... Amulet. Now come on, Fiona. I have your best interest at heart. Yup, we Fiona again because we found her amulet and touched it and that caused us to trip balls. But we know how this is going to play out, right? Because we found her ashes and a napkin that didn't burn up despite her ash. Maybe she just dropped the damn napkin now that I think about it. Man, we were overreacting to this whole situation. But whatever, we gotta escape this perilous thing we gotta escape from. And that involves a little bit of running around and doing some puzzle solving. But fortunately for us, there is no fail state here. So we needn't worry about dying. But someone is going to die. It's going to be the doctor in case you can't tell. Oh god, that's just a horrific way to die. Just being burned alive like that. Why was he even standing there? The fool! He's a doctor. I thought he'd be smarter than this. Oh, 
Whew. Yeah, this is a really intense scene. I don't think he's gonna escape Reuben. He burning alive. We just probably should just leave him be, frankly. Yeah, that's one of the more intense ways I've seen a villain killed in an adventure game. And on that little gruesome note ends our involvement with the little girl. We never play as Fiona again. Her story's resolved. She killed the baddie who wanted to do indescribable things to her. And I mean that. They're not really described as far as I can tell. He was a doctor. He wanted to do, like, medical experiments on her. Maybe just do generic evil Dr. Mengula kind of stuff. Who knows? But he was a bad guy and we burned him alive. And as for the rest of the three-odd member crew on this ship, well, they're all gone now, and that's completely understandable why the little girl would want them gone, considering one of them seemed like he was trying to rape her. So yeah, go little girl, you killed a bunch of grown men and you're safe now, right? Well, who knows? Well, actually, we do know. But first, let's get Anna's reaction. I'm... I'm back. The girl, she's safe. I've done it. Oh my god, fire! The whole ship will be ablaze in no time. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we are to take this game at face value, earlier on in the game, the game said the little girl was dead. Burned alive, found her ashes in front of the fire. But we had a vision, which sounds like we time traveled instead. And since we saved the little girl, the ashes aren't there anymore. And now the furnace is about to blow up because it consumed the evil doctor. And I guess it caused the... None of this makes much sense to me now that I think about it. But hey, let's go to Lex and tell him about what happened. Thank you for coming back. I would have died here otherwise. We need to get out of here, quick. Do you have the hook? Here it is. Please, help me. I can't do it on my own. Wait, I'll help you. We need to hurry. Attach the hook so that we can escape. But we need fresh water before we leave. We'll die without it. Yeah, power for the course at this point in the game. Let's just keep doing what Lex tells us to do. And of course we do it and solve all of our problems because we a big girl and Lex is so damn helpless. Did you get some fresh water? Here you go. Wait a minute. What the hell is this? Rat poison. Oh, the sleeping drug that Fiona gave to the sailors. It's one of these bottles. Sleeping drug? What are you talking about? This is rat poison. No, I saw what happened. Fiona put it into their food, but the bottle looked somehow different we don't have time to find out what you may or may not have seen it's the fresh water that's important and we've got it let's get to the crane oh well i guess that little twist is lost on me because this whole time i honestly thought that little girl poisoned all the sailors on this ship you know poisoned them to death i thought they're all dead but apparently this whole time anna thought she just gave them some sleeping pills which okay and again, I don't know why Anna would be so surprised that a little girl killed someone, because a little girl did just burn a man alive. She's capable of killing, and it makes sense for the situation she's in, so Anna's reaction to this whole scenario seems odd to me. In fact, Anna's reaction throughout this entire game is kind of bizarre. But with that said, we do eventually move the little lifeboat, and finally we're reaching the climax of the game. Oh my god! There are... four dead. The whole crew! Apart from the doctor. How the hell did a four-man crew run this damn ship? And again, why is she surprised they are dead? What did she think happened to them? I mean, the little girl burned the doctor alive again. This is all very puzzling to me. Hang on a minute. What did you say about your vision? About the rat poison? Fiona. No way, she didn't! At this point, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. But maybe Anna does not understand that burning a man alive means you burned a man alive. He's dead. It's a horrific way to kill a man, and the little girl did it. So her poisoning these sailors, again, it's not that surprising, Anna. Oh, sorry. No, Fiona just tranquilized them with the sleeping drug. That wasn't a sleeping drug. She killed them all. In your visions, you saw a murderer. But I saved her. 
from the doctor. He intended to burn her alive. This whole situation, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around. So Anna, she's like the first vision where she poisoned the crew. She just meant to tranquilize them. And that was like a passive vision. But the scene with the doctor where we burn him alive. Again, let me stress that little girl burned a man alive. It was Anna in control of the little girl there, but not before. Like, all this, this whole thing, this game's building up. It's bizarre and makes no damn sense to me. Maybe in the original German, this is like some height of, like, tension or something. But in this English that I'm comprehending, I don't get any of this. Anna, again, why are you shocked the little girl killed? She burned a man alive. Again, she burned a man alive. Is this like one of those I shot the sheriff but I didn't shoot the deputy sort of situations, Anna? She did kill a man. You saw it. You helped her, in fact. God, all right, let's keep listening to this bull. Enough of this. Open your eyes. The girl killed them. How can you not see this? And she murdered this doctor, too. We'll never know for sure if he really was a bad man or not. Maybe he was just on board to care for the girl. Oh no, the game's twisting our perspectives on everything. Maybe everyone on this crew were nice people just trying to take care of the girl. Oh, wait a minute. No, they weren't. That whole thing with the doctor early on pretty firmly established that some messed up stuff was going on on this ship. And also the scene with the sailor who was like, I'm going to come for you later, implied, well, rape. So again, no sympathy for the crew or the doctor. They all sounded like pretty awful people. She didn't have any evil intentions. The horse being beaten to death. I mean, I just feel like I should post up an image of it. But seriously, she didn't have any evil intentions. She burned a man alive. Again, in 1886, was burned a man alive not a big deal? We need to get off the ship. This ship drives everybody crazy. Mary Celeste? What did you just say? It's written on the lifeboat. Is it the name of the ship? That's impossible. The Mary Celeste disappeared without a trace. What are you talking about? She was... She was a brigantine. It's been more than ten years now that she's disappeared somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. I've been at sea with some old sea dogs who claim to have seen her as a shadow in the mist. But whoever turned his ship to follow her didn't find anything. A ghost ship. Oh no, I'm so shocked. We're on a ghost ship. It's not the title of the game or anything. <sighs> yeah, this whole game ending, it really drawn out, isn't it, folks? Really drawn out. A ship that's been missing for over ten years? Yes. And your story about Fiona seems to fit. It's good to know that I didn't believe in you for nothing. Oh, I'm so happy you believed in us, Lex. It's not like this entire game we've been running errands from you and saving your ass. Why do you think that Fiona's story is true? There's exactly the same number of corpses outside as the number of sailors that Fiona's poisoned. There's a passenger list on the captain's cabin. Only the doctor is missing, and he was burnt alive. And you found his ashes in the machine room. So it all fits together. What you told me had really happened. Here on the Mary Celeste. So this leaves one very important question in this puzzle. Who are you? What? How do you know what's happened to Fiona? I had these visions. But why you? Everything seems to have something to do with you. Well, she was the only one doing anything on this damn ship since we came aboard, so it's not shocking stuff happened to her because, you know, she was doing things. How many years ago did you say all of this took place? At least 12 or 13 years. Why? How old was I back then? I don't quite seem to follow you. I must have been seven or eight years old when this ship disappeared. I was a child. A little girl. No. No, that can't be. That's impossible. Yeah. The actress is channeling her best Mark Hamill there. Can't be, it's impossible. There, I tried. Oh no, she opens a locket and realizes it's a picture of her parents. <gasps> that was me. All of this. It was me. Now what are you talking about? Yeah, that little girl was a blonde and you're a brunette, Anna. Do you dye your hair or something? I am Fiona. I did all of this. I'm the guilty one. But your name's not Fiona. Your name is... Anna. That's what my foster father called me. After he adopted me. He only told me that I survived a shipwreck. But whatever happened before that... I was never able to remember. Until now. Anna. We need to get off this ship. Now. Or this will be our grave. I can remember my family. Anna! The house in the colonies. It burned. I know, this must be tough for you. But there's one thing that I have no memories of. A brother. 
I don't think that I had a brother. Who was that voice that was talking to me through the wall? Who or what was that voice, Lex? Lex? What is it, Anna? Now we know who I am, but do we know who you are? My god, it's like the writer of this game decided to have a little writing exercise for the finale. Who are you, Lex? Who's Anna, really? What's their favorite food? What would they do on a sunny Sunday? For God's sakes, I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. What? What? I've said I've got no idea what you're talking about. Well, <laughs> how convenient that right after he says that, my audio dropped out. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. The voice acting just stopped working for the finale. So we won't be able to hear any of the voice actors tell us that basically Anna's going crazy. Oh my gosh, she was Fiona. Is she going to leave Lex behind to die in the ship or is she just going to take him along with him? Yeah, you get a little choose your own ending here. And that's, do you leave Lex to die in the ship or do you take him with you? Or better yet, you could just stay on the ship with Lex and burn alive. So there's like three endings here, and I chose Lex and her get off the ship because, well, it seemed like the most humane ending. So that does it for Black Sails, a game that frankly was eh. I kind of liked it, I kind of did it. It's a bit of a middle-of-the-road game for me. It has some intriguing ideas and some interesting artistic direction, but I just feel like this game didn't live up to its potential. Good ideas, not the best execution, and I imagine a lot of that had to do with the time, the budget that the game had. Seems like there were some really good creative ideas here, but they just never lived up to their potential. And that twist ending, yeah, it could have been executed a lot better. It just seemed drawn out and dull and kind of like, oh, what a twist. Yeah, they to go all M. Night Shyamalan on us and frankly it seemed a bit cheap because there was no hint throughout the game that something was like that was going to happen and frankly I didn't even care that it happened. I didn't know anything about these characters. Lex was a jerk throughout the game and frankly I'm kind of shocked that I let him live and as for Anna she was just not particularly interesting. I have no idea what she liked, disliked, what she did with her life. Like, oh, she was an orphan. And you're like, oh, well, I didn't know anything about her, so I don't feel any emotional attachment to this twist because I don't care about any of the characters. And I suppose that's the biggest problem with this game. Since it's so small, and since there is only two characters, the fact that they don't really have much of a personality or aren't all that interesting, and the simple fact that I was not engaged in them at all, kind of really brought this game down. But I will say it had some really nice puzzles. And they were fun and puzzling, and I enjoyed them for the most part. So, like, I don't know, middle of the road, C, C minus sort of game. Not bad. If you're a diehard adventure game fan, you'll probably like it. And if not, you can probably give it a pass. So that'll do it for my over analysis of Black Sails, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I thank you very much for your time. See you again, hopefully.